So it's 1215, um, it's 12.15, Colleen. So I hope all our friends have, it's, it looks like they're quiet in the chat. So hopefully they've gone to collect their materials, which are the, um, a pencil, a paper, and some pencil crayons. I'm gonna run upstairs and get my pencil crayons. I've forgotten to bring them down with me. And Owen, you're ready. Jibbler, you're ready. You've got your things. I'm so glad. So I'm going to turn it over to our amazing friend, Colleen. She's been a friend of Connected North for two years now. And anytime we have, um, anytime we have an art lesson, we call on Colleen because she is amazing. She's taught me so much about art um, and as soon as we said we wanted to connect at home, Colleen said, uh, me, I'm first. So we booked her in. So we're so happy to have her. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Colleen. And what we're going to do um, is we'll, I'll let you know if the students are, um, it, they need a bit more time or if they have something um, that they want you to do, I'll let you know that. Oh, is that okay? That would be amazing. And thank you so much, Mally, for that beautiful introduction. That's so lovely. I love working with Connected North so much, and I'm so excited to see how many participants are turning into this. That's amazing. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to draw a grasshopper. Um, I love insects. I love looking at different insects in art and in nature and things are starting to melt around here where I live and that always gets me thinking about um, the garden and going for walks in the park in spring and seeing all the different insects that come out during that time. Um, now grasshoppers are, I think, are just amazing. Um, insects are really amazing too. They're unlike um, a whole bunch of different animals. They are unlike man, unlike fish, they're unlike reptiles and birds um, because they have no backbone and they have a hard exoskeleton. That means their skeleton is on the outside of their body um, to protect them. And there are over a million different types of, of species of insects all over the world. Um, and in Canada alone, we have 140 different species just of grasshoppers. So 140 different types of grasshoppers just in Canada. So I thought a grasshopper would be a fun thing for us to draw. Um, and I've made a little, a little grasshopper that I cut out. Our grasshopper is gonna look kind of like this that we get to make. Um, now grasshoppers have some different features. They have some antennae antenna or antennae that stick out of their heads. Their um, their eyes, they have these big compound eyes. They have six legs. And on this one, I only made four. So I'll have to make sure that we have six legs on the one we do. They should have two. And the two at the back that help them to jump so when I think of grasshoppers, I think of jumping and of singing. Grasshoppers, they make kind of a singing sound. Grasshoppers and crickets do together. They have an, a really original kind of sound that they make. Um, so now, if everybody's got their materials ready, maybe we'll start with our drawing right now. Um, let me, I'm going to share my document camera here. Yeah, Colleen, we can't hear you in the document. Can you speak again or um, just enable your microphone? Thank <laughs> you. 
Colleen, go back up to where it says communicate and then click audio settings and see if you can make your um, microphone from your computer enabled. Sorry guys, Colleen is just getting her microphone and camera to work. See her camera. Audio. You're using Colleen. got it. Oh, it's working now? Okay, I don't know why it, okay. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Um, okay, so if everybody's got their piece of paper ready, we're gonna do it step by step. There you go. All right, so the first thing I think we should draw with our, with our grasshopper is to make his head. Um, and to make a grasshopper's head, I usually just make kind of a, a just a triangle. Triangle like that, that's upside down. Because normally when you make a triangle, you make the point part up at the top. So it's like an upside down triangle, just three lines together. So that's the first part. And I put it kind of over to the side. Um, but if you did it more in the middle, that's okay too. I'm just going to make it so we fit the whole grasshopper into the page. Um, now I'm going to make a line that goes out. This is going to be kind of the length of his body. Now I'm going to make another triangle part in the inside here, not as big as the head but just about there. Okay. Now I'm going to make the triangle's wing, which is gonna be like another, or sorry, the triangle's wing, <laughs> the grasshopper's wing, which is gonna be another triangle. And you'll wanna watch me first. I'm gonna make a line that goes down and then a line. Look at that, we've got one, two, three triangles. Now, most insects have wings. Not all of them do, but most insects have wings and grasshoppers definitely are one of the ones that have wings. They're known for their long flat wings that go out their back. So that, helps them to like go really high in the sky because they can jump with those long legs that spring off, but then they can also use their wings to fly and get bigger heights, greater heights. All right. Now, moving down to kind of the middle part of this back part of the wing, I'm gonna make a line that goes out and this is kind of the back part of the grasshopper's body. Now I'm going to create the abdomen of the grasshopper, kind of the big body part. And I'm going to make a line that kind of curves. It's going to start from about here and it's going to curve and meet the end of the grasshopper's body here. There we go. We can already see this is really starting to look like a grasshopper. Oh, and I'm just noticing on chat, are you guys talking about eating grasshoppers? I hear some mention of good source of protein. Some people do eat grasshoppers. So Colleen, as kids are doing this, do you suggest, I know you're using a Sharpie, a lot of them are using a pencil. Uh, yes. From Josh was to draw lightly. So if you make a mistake, it's easy to erase. Would you suggest that as well? That 
That sounds like a good idea. I usually mention at the beginning and I forgot to. I'm using a Sharpie just so that it's easier for you guys to see on my screen. If I was using a pencil, um, it may be a little light and difficult for you to see. Um, it's kind of a personal artistic uh, choice sometimes. I know some people like to draw very faintly and then erase if they make a mistake or want to um, erase out some lines that they added later. That's okay to do. It's also okay to make bold lines, make dark bold lines um, with your pencil. I'm okay with that too. I, I don't think you'll see, I even kind of went over this line a couple times. I don't mind that because sometimes it just adds to the character of the drawing. And sometimes I'll just go over it a bit darker. Oops, I bumped my camera a little bit. That was a great question though. All right, so what should we add now? I think now may be a good time to add those antenna coming out of the top of the grasshopper's head. I'm gonna curve them out, the feelers. And now I'm going to put the eyes in. I think I'm gonna make the eyes so it's like a half circle on both sides of this triangle. So I'm gonna do a half circle and a half circle. Kind of like this side, I guess, looks like a C and this look, looks like a backwards C, letter C. And then I'm gonna color it in. Grasshoppers, when you look at them closely, it kind of looks a little bit like an alien with those big eyes. Now, grasshoppers have strong jaws that are down here. Grasshoppers are herbivores, so that means that they eat all sorts of things. Oh, somebody wrote red eyes. Do they have red eyes? didn't realize that that so then it may be a good idea to leave it empty if you'd like and or you can color over with a red if you have a red i may do that after color over with a red crayon wow and i'm gonna make my grasshopper have a little half smile <laughs> Now you can choose to do that, or you can choose to leave it without the smile. The smile makes it look a little more cartoon-like, gives it a little bit of a personality, but if you want it looking more realistic and want to leave that out, that's okay too. That's totally fine. Um, now I'm going to add the legs. Um, a feature of insects is they have jointed legs. So they have legs with joints that bend. So I am going to put one line down, line this way, and a line that way. It's almost like a little lightning bolt. I'm keeping them really simple, these legs. So a little lightning bolt on that side. Maybe the students know how many legs a grasshopper has. Ah, I bet they do. How many legs? Six, Matthew. Yes. Gabby, look at all the answers you all know. Yes, six. You know the characteristics of an insect. That's amazing. So they've got front and then two jumping legs in the back, long jumping legs. I've added my legs like that. You can make them a, a little different if you'd like them to look a little different. They don't have to be exactly like mine. Legs, I'll give you guys. I did say it has six legs already. You're right. I gave away the answer, but that's good. It shows that you were listening. Good listening, Evie and Sarah. Or Evie. Or Evie. 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 Hey, thank you, Evie. My niece's name is Evie, so that's why I was wasn't quite sure. Evie, what a great name. Hey, 
Okay, now I'm gonna add the ones in the back. Uh, so how am I gonna add? I'm gonna make it a little taller than the wing. I'm gonna start here, kind of in the middle to the back part of the body, and I'm gonna make it go up high. They're super long, and then they're coming down, and then adding a little foot there. So that's one on one side. The other one we won't really see the whole leg, but I'm gonna make a little peak coming up. And then going down and then I'm going to imagine that the leg is going through on the other side. And then I'm going to add the little foot here. So I made that imaginary line. Look at all the triangles in this piece. You should almost look, there's triangle, 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 big triangle, triangle. Wow. I'm going to make this a little wider, this part of the leg. Give you guys, just a minute. Colleen, I have yes. a question for you. Uh, the leg that's at the back, yes, you hit it behind the body. Why did you do that? Ah, why? Because it's on the other side of the body. Good question, Mally. So I did hide it on that back side. So they have one jumping leg on this side of the body, and then one on the other side of the body, the body that side of the body we're not seeing. Um, and that gives it a little bit of depth. It creates, um, tricks your eye a little to thinking that the grasshopper has another side to its body. It's not just this flat two page or two dimensional piece of paper that we're working on. Um, your eye tricks your brain a little to thinking this is a real grasshopper. So I think now we're going to add the part that's called the spiracles and that are that is these um, parts of the hard shell that are on the outside of the grasshopper. What I'm doing, I'm just creating these curved lines kind of like uh, backwards letter C's or sideways U's that are going to go down this grasshopper's body. a pattern. Pattern is when you have a line that repeats itself. I'm going to stop about there. A pretty happy little grasshopper. Now I wonder if oh, go ahead. I just wonder if you know what those lines are for, Colleen. Ah, that is a good question. I think it is part of the exoskeleton of the grasshopper to protect the grasshopper. Um, but I think they are lines like this because they are almost like um, like plates. Um, I'm not sure if that's the best way to describe it. That that move. Almost like a suit of armor. Like a suit of armor. Thank you. That's that's what my brain was. Armor. How this a suit of armor would have those folds of metal around the shoulders and the elbows to help protect it, but also be able to move. Let the knight move. Um, yeah. And I believe that that is what these spiracles are for. So we could even enhance them a little bit by adding this um, extra little line to show that uh, they kind of interconnect with each other. One folds under the other. Go. 
though. So if you want to add that, you can too. And I think I'm going to add um, some lines into the wing, the grasshopper. And I'm making the lines a little more organic than some of the other lines I've used. That means it's a little more uh, a little wavy looking, more natural looking. The other parts of the grasshopper I made were more straight lines. And I'm making a little more wavy looking. Harper has a question. I'm, I don't know because um, we're um, Colleen's not an entomologist, but does, do you know when grasshoppers are most active? Oh, that is an excellent question that I actually don't know the answer to. Um, I know that it seems to be in, in Manitoba where I live. I live in Winnipeg. Um, grasshoppers always seem to be around more um, when it's really hot and dry, I've noticed, um, but I don't know, I don't know if, uh, if that's, that's when they're usually more active. Um, yeah, I, I will need to look that up and learn more about that. Does anybody? Yeah, does anyone know when they might be most active? Do we have any uh, entomologists, which are, which are bug experts? Summer. In the summer, yeah, when it is hot. When it's hot. I think it's often in August is when I notice that there seems to be more grasshoppers around. How old can they get? That is an excellent question too that I do not know. I'm not sure how old they get. I think grasshoppers have a very short lifespan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, um, they have a very, very short lifespan. I know some species live only for a day or two. Wow, only a day or two. Mm -hmm. Now, I thought it may be fun to make a little ladybug friend for this grasshopper. What do you guys think? Oh, do they like flies? I think they do like flies because um, I think, yeah, somebody else is saying yes. I think that they eat small other small insects, but then they also eat um, green things as well, like plants. Uh, is the yeah for yes, uh, Oh, did you know the mother grasshopper kills the father to feed the young? I, I don't know. Um, I know that some species of insects do that. So many great questions about grasshoppers. Okay, I am going to um, draw a little ladybug friend over here for a grasshopper. Um, and to do that, I'm going to start with an oval and I'm making it kind of at us at the side. You can make your little oval look however you would like. Oh, I'm glad somebody else would like to draw a ladybug. <laughs> nice. So I am making a circle. I really love ladybugs. I love looking at ladybugs. Um, my mother buys me gifts with ladybugs on it all the time. You too, Gabby. That's awesome. Um, now I'm going to draw another kind of half moon or half circle, and that's our ladybug's head. Now I am going to, hmm, how am I going to do the wings this time? Should I do, I think I'm going to do the wings so I've got one going this way and then another going this way. And I am going to add some spots. Oh, I like that somebody else loves ladybugs. I'm going to put 
some spots on the ladybug. And I am going to put the two eyes here. The ladybug's kind of looking at its grasshopper friend and I'm gonna add some ladybug. That's a cool fact, Al Williamson. Oh, I missed that how many years or how many months old they are. Wait for years, it popped up. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, ladybugs are helpers in the garden. So many times gar uh, people who have roses and other delicate flowers will go to buy ladybugs at the store because they eat little pests called aphids. Right. So sometimes my husband will go and get some ladybugs because they start, the aphids start eating their, his roses and he doesn't like it. So ladybugs are helper insects. Mm -hmm. They are. Nice. Um, now, if you wanted to add some, if you wanted to add some more background, I think I'm going to put um, my grasshopper on a leaf. So I am going to make a curve underneath my grasshopper. And I'm going to imagine the back part of the leaf coming through and get up here. And maybe, maybe the ladybug is sitting on a different sort of leaf. Maybe when I color these. Color. There we go. And then I think I'm going to make a uh, spirally looking other leaf in the back here. Oh, is somebody asking what's my name? My name's Colleen. Is that Emily asking? Hi Emily, I'm Colleen. Go. Would you guys like to see me add some color to this drawing now? Yes. All right. I like that quick response. Um, so when you're coloring, you can use whatever you have on hand. If you have any materials on hand, um, I have some pencil crayons. I have crayons. I have some markers. Um, sometimes Um, and sometimes if I just have regular kind of office equipment around like highlighters or different colors of pens, I will just use that too. Um, so I am going to color in, I'm going to start with the green crayon and I'm going to color in my grasshopper green. And I'm just, uh, just coloring it carefully, rubbing back and forth. And my crayon is picking up a little bit of the texture from my table, my studio table here, um, which I'm okay with. And Owen was hoping that you could put a little sun in there somehow or some oh, light. Oh, nice. Thanks for mentioning that. I would love to add a sun. Good idea, Owen. Oh, the ladybug needs legs? Yes. It's a good idea to put the legs on the ladybug and the ladybug has six legs too, I believe. One, two, three on one side, one, two, three on the other side, and it has some antenna too. I'm going to put the antenna over here like this. There we go. And okay, so the sun, I'm going to make a circle. Over here and I'm gonna, you know what, I kind of liked how these spirals looked. So I'm gonna um, put some spirals on the sun as well. Uh, give some balance to the drawing. Now 
balance is you know, when you do one thing to one side of the artwork, you do something similar to the other side of the artwork. They're just going to go off the page. There we go. Well, let's see if this marker works. I got a yellow marker. Oh, it does. Why are ladybugs red? So I, I, I will look that up for the Martinician family. That is a great question. Why are ladybugs red? Hmm. Oh, does anybody have any ideas? How far can ladybugs fly? I don't know how far they can fly. I think they, they can, well, you know what? I really don't know. I shouldn't guess. Not quite sure. So many good questions. I know we need to have a have the uh, Natural Science Museum in here with us today. Yes, yes. Need an insect expert along with us. But I do know and I remember from um, from school is orange ladybugs bite, whereas red ladybugs do not. Yes, yes. And we in Winnipeg, just the last few years, we've had a lot of the orange um, ladybugs move in. If anyone is coming in a little later in this um, session today too, the video will be posted today. So if you need to go back and go back through some steps, that's fine. I see we had Ty and Wes and uh, Dia and Logan come in a bit later. It's so nice there's so many people joining. Now I'm just going over my uh, green crayon with a yellow crayon here. And um, as always, if anyone would like to email me their picture and take a picture of our grasshopper and ladybug scene i would love to see it and pass it on to colleen that would be so nice i would love to see it i always love to see student artwork We really should put that our emails on the website, Katie, so the kids can know where to find us. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'd love to see the artwork and anybody who has my email or has me on Facebook, feel free to send it through to me that way as well. Me too. Because in days like this, when we can't go and visit our friends, it's nice that they can share with us. I like all the guesses about why ladybugs are red because of what they eat. That definitely applies to a flamingo. I know a flamingo eats shrimp, so that's why they're pink. So maybe that's ladybugs as well. Now, I think now, Mr. Martinishan, you'll be able to tell me, is that Avery? That you just sent me the picture? Yep, so I have a picture from Avery sent to me through Facebook already. Wow, wonderful. She's got a big smile on her face. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, thank you, Avery. I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, I'm saying somebody said add flowers. I was thinking that when I drew this um, sun, I thought, oh, this sun kind of looks like a flower. I should add some flowers. I think if you add flowers, that would be amazing, an amazing idea. 
if you wanted to make another grasshopper or ladybug, um, you could cut it out also, and you could put it like this one that I cut out and you could put it on different backgrounds. Um, you could even find images in a magazine uh, to use as a background. I'm looking around to see if I can see something I have on hand. Um, oh, here's an image from a magazine. Even the background you have it on, Colleen, makes it look artistic. That's my, that's his, my studio table. So I paint right on top of this table. Uh, thanks, Katie. Um, but yeah, you could find this is a scene with uh, from a magazine just stripped out of a magazine and there's a little elephant on the ground. It, uh, you can make it look like the grasshopper is jumping over the elephant. Um, you could make a difference. Uh, you can make almost like a play where the grasshopper is the character and you just change the background depending on what pictures you find from magazines or looking through a book. Ooh, here's some glittery paper. Oh, that's that cool. Fun. Yeah. I think if I were to color in this whole page, I would pick some nice bright blue for the background to make a nice blue sky. Maybe I'd even make a cloud, one little fluffy white cloud. And I'll draw that in now. I just like making clouds starting off with some upside down U's. And then I just connect it with a little squiggly line in the, on the bottom. There you go. Maybe I'll do another little cloud up there. And are there lots of animals that you can start with shapes, Colleen? I start um, almost every animal I start with different shapes. Um, uh, let me think what other ones. So this could be the head, a triangle like this, a curved triangle could be the head of almost um, any or a lot of animals. Um, cats come to mind. They have a very triangular looking head or a dog. Um, yeah, you can look at an image of almost any animal and then just try and break it down to think what kind of shape would I start with. So tomorrow when we do the shark, we can maybe investigate that as well. Yes. I think it's kind of cool that it's shark day tomorrow. I think so too. I think so as well. We'll have so many shark experts, Colleen. You won't have <laughs> about information while you're drawing. I, I'm thinking I'm going to have to really study up on my shark, uh, my shark knowledge tonight. I think you can actually fun. sit in and join us if you'd like, Colleen, and sit in on the shark session with these guys. You are welcome to. Oh, that'd be amazing. It's just before yours. Oh, that would be incredible. Yes, please. And as we have you guys on here, I'm not sure if Mally asked this question yet or not, but if there's some animals that you would like to learn to draw in the next few weeks, something you've been dying to learn to draw, pop it in there and we'll add that to our list and see what we can squeeze in. Oh, that'd be, that would be great. I suggest you give Colleen a real challenge. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Give me a challenge. Um, I also really love dinosaurs, so I don't know if anybody's in to learn. Wolf, that's a hard one, Colleen. Oh, a llama. We have a llama, a wolf. Llama. Lion. These are all amazing animals. I love animals. Someone said unicorns, but we already have a unicorn session booked. For a couple weeks from now, a kitten. So maybe Colleen can think about some animals that go together in an ecosystem Ooh. and draw a couple, just the way that you have now, a grasshopper and a ladybug are in the same ecosystem. I, and I think it. a dragon and a lizard would be too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. 
lizard. Well, or a dragon and a unicorn could be in the same ecosystem. A um, mole. <laughs> they could. Oh, I love moles. They're so cute. Pandas, cats and dogs. You guys all have such great ideas. Oh, a dragonfly. See, a dragonfly could go in this oh, as we well. We could fit a dragonfly in. Shall we quickly do a dragonfly? So I think the dragonfly will have sure. to kind of, I'll make it kind of small and it'll seem like it's way off in the distance. Um, let me think. I'm going to start with a little circle. This is going to be the dragonfly's head. And then this is the dragonfly's body. And some more little circles. Um, and then see how am I going to make the wings this way and a wing this way I really like dragonflies because they eat mosquitoes Now I think I'm going to color this part in black. Dragonfly's wings are kind of iridescent looking. They have all different colors that look kind of magical together in the sunlight. Um, let me use this little light pink color. the ideas of things that this the boys and girls would like to draw oh wonderful and today i thought we were just doing a, a grasshopper i didn't realize you were doing a whole scene this is i didn't know either until we got going oh, yeah there's some good suggestions a pegasus Ooh, pegasus Dragon. wow wow we won't be sleeping for the next uh till september <laughs> no all right, this is really great. How many of you find drawing relaxing? Does it help today, like give you a me? Yep, I do. It's a little bit less stressful when your your hands and your mind are working together. Yeah. I'm just using a crayon on its side. I like to draw anime, um, Gabby, that's cool. Oh, and Tiffany says, thank you for the dragonfly. We oh, have- Oh, thank you, Tiffany. Colleen, I have to say, we're very proud of our Connected North at home students because they're all respectful and we haven't had anything to worry about on our connections with the students. Oh, that's so lovely. You have a paper job today with lots of work and you were stressed out. This is Zane, but he feels better now. Oh, Zane, that's so nice to hear. I'm glad to hear that. And Jibbler said it was fun. Drawing is relaxing. And did you learn something today, even though we're not entomologists? Yes. Oh, that's good to hear. We all figured it out together. <laughs> that looks so great, Colleen. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, everybody, for drawing along with me. I had a great time. And the Martinition family says that they like you, and Gabby definitely learned something. And Anna, not really, but that's okay. I hope she enjoyed herself anyway. And Evie and Sarah, thanks for the lesson. It was so much fun. Oh, was that from, um, is it Isla, is Isla or Isaac? That was Avery. Well, thank you, Colleen, for the amazing, oh. I'm switching back. I'm just switching back to Isla. Ace. <laughs> oh, I want to take, can you hold it up just a bit higher? I get a picture of you and the students Yay. chat. That's great. Thank you. Love to see that. Oh, maybe this grasshopper friend can just come and visit the other grasshopper. 
So everybody sounded like they had a great time. I know that Katie and I did. And families out there, thanks again for, jo for connecting us. And um, in about 15 minutes, we can learn about Arctic adaptations. This was definitely a meadow scene. And we're going to switch ecosystems and go to the Arctic. And Colleen, I think our next lesson is tomorrow about it's because it's Shark Day at Connected North. I look forward to drawing a shark with you guys tomorrow. That's going to be wonderful. Who's going to come for sharks tomorrow? Oh, lots of me's. Yay. At the same time, isn't it? No, no. Is it at the same time? Yes, the same time. Wonderful. Oh, that's great. Look at all the me's. Thanks. I even have some art already sent to me, Colleen. I'm going to forward it over to you. You can see some beautiful pictures. I think the person is Emily that sent me the pictures. So boys and girls, Katie and I will put our webs our, our websites, our emails on the Connected North at Home website. And anytime you have a question for a provider or something to share with us, and um, just you are free to email us and just share your work with us. We're very, very happy to do that, to share it with Colleen or anybody that uh, we've connected with. Yeah, it was Scarlett's picture that I got actually amazing. Oh, and Annika did butterflies. So Annika, we'd love to see your picture that you added oh. butterflies too. That's awesome. This would be great to add. Great. So thank you for coming everyone. And thanks Colleen for always being such a great friend to Connected North and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks Bye. Colleen. Awesome. See you guys. See you.